Hello everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Amanda. I am a teacher turned homeschool mom. This is Raising A to Z, a YouTube channel all about homeschooling. And today I'm gonna to show you how I plan out my unit studies during a month when I have curriculum. So recently I've had a few people ask me, how do I plan out my unit studies when I have a curriculum? And how do I plan it out when I don't have a curriculum? Like when you print off a unit study and it's got a PDF, how do you break it down? How do you figure out what you're gonna do when? What does that look like? And what happens if you don't have a curriculum? Like how do you plan a unit study without a curriculum? And so while the process is the same, it is slightly different whether I have a curriculum or not. Today I will show you how I plan out my month in my unit study when I do have curriculum. And next week I will show you how I plan out a unit study when I don't use curriculum. So get a little bit of both. So let's get into it. How do I plan a unit study when I do have curriculum? Number one, you got to get some curriculum. I think that's the, the first thing. Um, I personally have had really good luck with Teachers Pay Teachers. This is kind of my first year using quite a bit of like printed unit study curriculum. In the past, I've actually like built all my unit studies. So when I get into that next week, you'll see exactly how I do that. Um, but this year, I wanted something with a little bit more structure and a little less like me having to do it all all the time. I was finding that a little bit exhausting. And so by having a printed curriculum, it gives me something that I can like, it, be, it becomes my like structure and a little bit almost like having a spine of what to work off of. And I don't exactly have to like create everything out of my brain. So I've personally really been enjoying having printed curriculum. I'm not a fan of buying like huge, really expensive printed curriculums, just because I like to be able to build and, and elaborate off them a little bit. Um, but I have found some really, really great ones on uh, TPT, formerly Teachers Pay Teachers, that I find are really reasonable. I think you can go in there and put in some great search parameters and get some really great stuff that's incredibly reasonable. And that's pretty much where I've been getting like 95% of my unit studies. That's number one. Number two, um, I print it all off and I read through it, kind of like skim through it, decide what I'm gonna use and what I don't wanna use. Um, for example, sometimes you have curriculum where it has like activity pages that you're like, I just, I don't want to use those, whether it's like game pages or a section you don't want to use. For example, um, our nocturnal animals unit that I found, I think I paid like $7 for it, which was great. It did both my kids, but it had a whole section on math and it was just not stuff that we would be working on at that time. And I didn't want to add more math to my schedule. So like I just took that whole section out. So you want to go through and decide if there's stuff you want to take out because it's just not going to work for you. And you want to make sure that you see what's in it. You want to know what, what's in it and what you're working with, right? Number three, I put my curriculum aside and I pull out my planner and I look at how many days I have for doing units for that month. I work in kind of like a one month block. I find that's just what works well for my kids at the ages that they are. As they get older, you can do longer unit studies um, because you can go more in depth. But my kids are only kindergarten and second grade. So right now they kind of like being able to change it up fairly frequently. So we're doing kind of the one unit a month. And so I like to go through my month and see how many days I have for unit studies because I don't do unit studies with my kids every single day. So we do a lot of like our readings during our morning basket. So that does happen. But in terms of like sitting down and doing our unit studies curriculum, we don't do it every day um, because sometimes it just doesn't work in our schedule. For example, on Tuesdays, we have a morning gymnastics class. So we get up, we do morning basket, uh, math and language arts and then we're done because we are getting ready to head out the door. Once a month we have a full day science program at the science center. That's a day that I would normally be doing unit study so I take that out and so I go through if there's things you know if I have an appointment day one day if the kids have a dentist or something going through and seeing how many days it actually ends up being in the month that I have to do the unit studies because you need to know what you're working with right and so for example I might end up only doing like 10 to 12 days for the whole month which is pretty average for me on when it comes to unit studies um in terms of like when we're gonna do our seated work so then I pick up my unit study and I go through it and say okay where if I need to divide this into for example making it easy 10 sections where is the natural break in the curriculum to do these 10 sections so for example when we were doing our nocturnal animals it was kind of a natural break that it had a reading page a writing page uh, uh identify 
and label the animal page and then a compare and contrast page. So we kind of cover those four pages and that was one day. And then the next day we would move on to the next animal. Like that was the natural break. Um, sometimes when we did our ancient Egypt studies, we had kind of different sections. There was one that was like, it did two or three pages on like geography. Boom, that was the break. Then it switched over to like pyramids and the history and the importance of pyramids. That was another section. So kind of going through and seeing where the natural breaks in the curriculum are and trying to use those to break it down into the number of days that I need. Step number four is I like to add some activities, some hands-on activities to the unit study that I'm doing. So sometimes your unit studies will come with activities and options and ideas, which is great. Um, and I do those typically on Fridays. It's like our fun day Friday thing. We'll do it on a Friday morning. But if it's just a like reading, writing, fill in the blanks, kind of seat work kind of book, then I will try to supplement it with some things that I can find off of Pinterest just to make it a little more hands-on. Um, and I, like I said, I aim for like one hands-on unit study activity a week, but that doesn't mean you have to have four activities. So sometimes I will take a bigger activity and break it down. For example, when we did our ancient Egypt unit study, we did this like whole mummification process. So one day we sculpted the top of the sarcophagus. And the next week we painted the sarcophagus and built the bottom. The week after that, we did um, like a mummification with the Barbies and all of that. So those all work together to make, that was three weeks. There was, I feel like there was another step in there that I missed. Anyway, it was one activity, but it took us three, oh, I, I wanna say it took us almost four weeks to do. By the time we did everything, let everything dry, everything was ready, it, it took us three or four weeks to actually complete it, but it was only one activity in the long term. So that's just something to think about. It doesn't always have to be a new thing every week. It can be one bigger project broken up into smaller sections over the course of the week. So yeah, try to get one, do at least one fun activity hands-on a week that is related to it and supplement like that. Um, so I will go onto the library website and type in keywords like Egypt and look for and put in the uh, audience and click kids and start pulling books on ancient Egypt, Egyptian life, Egyptian culture, pyramids, stuff like that. And just start clicking on books that I think will be fun for my kids. I also like to pick one chapter book that is kind of a bigger book that we can read over the course of a couple days, um, at least, depending on how big the book is. And I like to put that in with our books as well. So that usually becomes the book we read before bed, um, starting at the beginning of the unit. And then all the other books I put in our morning basket and we read those first thing in the morning when we do our morning basket. So we do a little bit of reading in the morning and then we have some more reading at the end of the day. And that way we kind of by the end of the week, even if we haven't on a Tuesday, for example, when we don't have unit studies time, we've done some unit study reading. So it just kind of helps spread it out and give us different types of books to read. And I think just books are so much fun and you learn so much from reading that it's just, it's just great. And then number six, the last thing I like to do is I like to see if I can find any movies that are related to our topic. Um, I feel like that's just like, a little bonus for us. So when it comes to family movie night and we sit down and watch movies together or hang out, um, I like to see if I can find something that is like remotely related. So like we did a unit on cooking and we watched Ratatouille. Are there mice out there that are actually cooking? No, but it was a really great movie to watch while we were doing this like unit study on cooking. And so I find things like that and it's just like a little like tie-in and it's kind of funny to watch the kids get excited when they understand things or they make the connections to the books that we're reading or to the things that we've seen in our, our unit study or that they've learned in the unit study. So it's just kind of a nice fun way to kind of tie some things together for them. So that's it. That's how I break it down. I know some of you guys might think it's seen, there's more to it, but it really is that simple. You just gotta figure out what you're using, break it down to how many days, and then just supplement and add from there. Um, next week, like I said, I will cover what I do when I don't have a curriculum, and I will show you how I build a unit study without curriculum next week. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure you subscribe and click the bell to get notifications. If you want to see what we're doing in our unit studies time when we do it, you'll definitely want to follow along and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.